What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Reviewing Your Customs, episode 6. It's been a while since we've done one of these. We have four new artists, one of them's even an international artist all the way from Italy. Very excited, it's been a while since we've done one of these. Reviewing Your Customs is a segment where we go ahead and break down everything when it comes to custom sneakers from the packaging all the way down to the very last detail. So we're very excited to bring you guys another one of these. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So first up, we have a pair from Cadet B7. Fun fact, these are actually from longtime supporter of the channel, Brandon Denton. And coincidentally enough, back when we had only probably about a thousand subscribers, we decided to host our first giveaway. And Brandon was actually the winner of our Angel Starter Kit. So that is super cool. He's been supporting us for a very long time. So thank you as always for that, Brandon. All right, I'm excited to see these. Definitely a cool look for the airbrush effects on the top of the Air Force box. Oh man, these are, dang. Oh man, these are crazy. These are crazy. These are all over the place, man. I don't even know where to begin. This is definitely Brandon's signature style, man. Like, why is there a Kirby on there? <laughs> That's wild. There are so many insane elements to try to break down on these, but for the most part, both of the shoes have this really cool drip effect where a lot of the color work is done on the sock liner, the tongue, and the upper half of the shoe. And then it has this cartoony drip where we reveal a lot of that factory white underneath near the bottom half of the shoe. Now on our right shoe from up above, you can tell we have a darker blue near the sock liner and top of the tongue, and then that's gonna kind of bleed into a lighter blue near the bottom half of the shoe. On our left shoe, we have this really bright purple that then has a rainbow effect bleeding all the way into our light neon green and yellow near the toe box of these. We also have a separate gradient on the tongue itself, which finishes off with this Tiffany blue, which really stands out apart from the rest of these purples and oranges. Now on the outside of our right shoe, we have the Basquiat style swoosh along with a Nipsey silhouette, the CDG heart, and then a really big Kirby starting to get near the front of the shoe. Then on our toe box, we have this huge Bape silhouette and moving to the inside of the shoes, we have the black drip effect that starts to bleed into a pink. Then our inside swoosh has this really cool crack cement look on it. Along with this incredibly bold galaxy look behind the swoosh, we have so many cool elements here like the glowing orb, the green glow around some of the lightning. I love how this turned out. Then stretching across the back tabs of both shoes, we have a really clean Supreme logo and now moving into our left shoe, starting off with the Joker silhouette. We then move into the Kobe Nike logo, along with some designer brand stenciling behind this rainbow gradient of some Gucci, a little bit of LV, and then on the other side, we have some Fendi also. So this is a really cool way to just incorporate a million different elements of these. We also have the Kobe silhouette on the outsides of the shoes, along with the signature Smiley Cadet logo. Love how these came out, so many cool things. We have the Pink Panther that is opposite of the Kirby on the other shoe. So just a really unique way of tying in so many different elements on these. Then on the toe box for our left shoe, we have a dripping Chanel logo along with a really cool take on the Joker smile that starts near the very front toe box and then kind of bleeds into that side medial panel. Now there's a couple things here that I wanna talk about that I think were totally intentional as far as where the gradient is of the shoe and then incorporating in some of the elements, starting off with the Joker smile. Now it works so well here because near the front of the shoe, we have the green, which could potentially be played into the hair from the Joker. Then we have that red Joker smile. Now moving into the back of these, this is where we have the Kobe silhouette on the outside. And then we have the Mamba logo on the inside. We also have the Joker silhouette here, which is done near the purple. You could tie that into a lot of the purple trench coat and whatnot. And then on the other shoe, we also have the Nipsey silhouette, which was done near the back where we have the darker blue. So although a lot of this may seem random as far as where a lot of the elements were placed, I think that it was definitely done intentionally. This design also tries to incorporate some of that cartoony 2D look. You could tell on some of the white panels, which were untouched, still that factory white, you incorporate some of that black line work. All of a sudden, now you have that cartoon look, super easy to do. This design also tries to incorporate some of that sketchy 2D cartoony look on the white factory parts of the shoe underneath the drip, and that's done super easily with just some black line work on those white panels. 
All right, so it happens to the best of us, but I know you would definitely want me to point it out. So it looks like, although there was a ton of stencils going on here, it looks like a couple were left behind. I'll go ahead and pick those off for you on the Kobe silhouette. But when you have a million different elements going on to a design like this, it's very easy to forget about something like that. But I love your style, man. I love how these turned out. These are super bold, super loud, super colorful, exactly how you intended to make them. So great job on these. Next up, we have a pair all the way from Italy coming from Blore Customs. Little bit of marker design here on the box it says Rick and Morty by Blore Customs. Got a sticker on the Air Force One paper. Oh man, check these out. Got some custom swooshes. These are wild. So starting things off with the toe box on both of the shoes, we have that signature Rick and Morty vortex pattern. All of the line work, the dot work, it's extremely clean. Neon green's an extremely tough color to really pack in the saturation. Sometimes it could take a lot of coats to do that, but it's done very well here. Then for our vortex pattern, rather than ending at this panel right here that wraps around the entire toe box, we let it bleed a little bit onto this side medial panel. I really like how that effect turned out and I think it was a smart decision to not end it there. Then on the outside of both shoes, we have custom swooshes. These look really cool. Obviously these had to be cut out separately with a different patch of leather and then turned into this custom graphic with the spaceship. So that's always cool. I'm always a fan of altering the swoosh, but still keeping the essence, still being able to tell it's a swoosh but adding an effect to just really help uh, tie in some different elements from whatever your theme is. Now on the back tabs of both shoes, we have two different characters. We have Pickle Rick on one and then Morty on the other with an eye patch. I think that this was a really innovative way to tie in the different characters. And then we have a couple different panels which tie in other elements from the characters such as Morty's shirt and then kind of just this pickle design. And both of them are done in this really popular theme that became really big in custom sneakers over the last few years of this kind of cartoon style. So there's this washed effect near the outer edges of the panels and that looks so dope man. Here we can see a little bit more of that cartoon effect that's done on the medial panel behind the swoosh along with like I said the yellow shirt here where all you do is kind of try to darken up the edges and it really helps the panels pop and it just gives it this cool cartoon flavor. Sticking with that cartoon effect it looks like it bleeds onto our laces also so on the left shoe we have the outer edges of the white laces with a green effect and then on the right shoe we have the outer edges with a pink effect. Then it looks like we also have a set of custom tongue tags that were likely heat pressed on. They have the Rick and Morty tongue tag and they say by Blore Customs. So a couple little things that I think could potentially be improved on, trying to clean up some of the paint that got on the midsole on these. This is something that could really easily be cleaned up by dipping your Q-tip into some acetone, removing that, scraping some of the paint off with the toothpick. Little things that are just gonna clean up the midsole more. I think adding a little bit of black paint on these edges of the swoosh would also add to that cartoon effect. It would just help it pop out a little bit more. It's also just gonna give it a little bit more of a clean look too, in my opinion. But overall, I absolutely love how these came out. A very creative, dope take on the Rick and Morty theme. Next up, we have a pair from Fresco 402. All right, looks like we have another pair of Air Forces, except an Air Force High this time. And it looks like we have a Kobe tribute inside. Oh man, these are sweet. Little stickers also on the inside, always a great touch. All right, let's check these out. So starting off, it looks like we have the two Kobe portraits. We have the younger number eight Fro Kobe, and then we have the 24 Kobe on this side. Both of them have the angel halo on top. That's a great touch. This is a really cool memorial piece, man. I love how these look. Purple and yellow obviously being complementary colors. That's not easy to do. That's not easy to blend. This fade is awesome. That is one of the toughest fades to do. Something where you're trying to fade complementary colors. We have the yellow Lakers gold on the toe box into this violet, this purple in the back. It's not as much of a dark purple as the Lakers actually are, but obviously you could still tell it's a Lakers colorway. And here we have that middle bar. You cannot 
see where the colors start and stop at all. So that's always the look you're trying to go for anytime you're trying to do a gradient. So right away, huge pops on the gradient on these. Then on the gold toe boxes of both shoes, we have a little bit of splatter effect done in both white and purple. And this wasn't done with just the toothbrush method because we have some of that stringy splatter look. Love how that turned out. Then we have a custom set of laces on both of these where the yellow bleeds into the purple. And what I really like about these is that the yellow really ends where the gradient of the yellow ends on the shoe also. So there's just so many things about these that you could tell were really well thought out. We also have a custom clear set of Dubrays on the laces. That's a Fresco Customs. This is a great branding technique. It doesn't take away from the design at all. It's not incredibly bold and standing out and loud. Nice little subtle touch. I love how those look. Now on the insides of the shoes near the back, we have a bunch of stencils going on. We have the Lakers logo, the Kobe and Gigi silhouettes, rest in peace text along with legends never die. All of these were likely done by laying down a stencil and then spraying a little bit of an outer glow or some yellow around it. They all look very, very cool. One minor little thing that I would like to point out is that I would have tried to make sure that Kobe's leg does continue down into the swoosh, really make sure that it's completed and doesn't end up here. Then on the back tabs of both shoes, we have the Mamba logo done in yellow with a little bit of purple spray around it. What I think can happen here sometimes is if you intentionally don't prep surfaces because you're going to keep them factory or whatever, so the back tab was going to stay white all along, maybe you skipped out on prepping it, and then you decide, okay, let me add a little bit of a stencil look here. So you add down the stencil, you spray around it, and then because it wasn't prepped, some of the paint can rub off super easily. So that's what I think happened on the purple spray around both of these logos. Now for the main attraction on these, these Kobe portraits on both of the shoes. These look so awesome, man. I love this cartoon style. All of the contrast and depth that is packed into here. You really weren't afraid to pack in the contrast and that's one of the most important things anytime you're trying to do any type of portrait work. Love how these turned out. These really capture an emotion of Kobe holding out his jersey. I think that was after he won his fourth championship, uh, the first one without Shaq. So man, you can really just kind of feel the emotion in these so I love how these turned out. The glowing effect around the halo above Kobe is also a great touch. I'm also really glad that there's not a glow behind the portraits themselves since Kobe's wearing the yellow jersey in both of these. That automatically really pops in contrast up against the purple background of these. So there was no outer glow or just effect needed behind any of these portraits. Another thing that I really enjoy is some of the background stenciling on these shoes. So when you blend together two tricky colors and you have this middle area where you kind of create this weird color, he intentionally added some purple background stenciling in there. It just helps remove from that distraction of looking at that somewhat odd color and it just also really helps bleed those two colors into each other. So overall, there has been some incredible Kobe tribute pieces and I love how these came out. You really did your own thing on these. You found a way to make your own artistic style stand out and really do him justice. So great job on these. And our final pair of the day is going to be from Kixar Customs. All right, looks like we have our fourth and final pair of Air Forces, an all Air Force episode. So starting off with the top of the box, it looks like we're gonna be working with a SpongeBob theme because within the Swish itself, we have some SpongeBob elements tied in. Some yellow tissue paper instead of the stock paper. And let's see what we have. Okay. So this is an awesome take on the classic Spongebob and Patrick theme. Right away before I talk about anything else, I have to dive right into my favorite part of these. Starting on the back tab, we have a Krabby Patty on one with the Kixar logo done in the Spongebob font. And then on the other shoe, we have Spongebob's Pineapple House along with the 2020 underneath. And both of these little text elements were done with the Spongebob font. Love how that looks. There are so many cool elements, but right away, those are definitely my favorite right off the bat. So for the overall vibe of both of the shoes, this is really playing into the base shoe itself and really utilizing all of the panels of an Air Force One to your advantage. With the toe box, we have both of the characters' eyes done, of course, in that classic cartoon style. Then moving on to some of the other panels, this is where you start to tie in some of their clothing. 
So for our SpongeBob shoe on the panel that wraps around our toe box, we have that done completely in brown to resemble SpongeBob's pants, and then his black buckle can be seen here also. So if you start to think about some of the elements that we've already touched on, SpongeBob's brown pants, his white shirt, his red tie, his big bold white eyes, you have already managed to tie all of those elements in together through separate panels without even including some huge SpongeBob portrait. So the amount of creativity and thought that goes into a design like this of really breaking down a character is just so cool. Then as far as the swooshes and the eyelet panels go, we have some of those classic signature bold SpongeBob colors along with some of those bikini bottom flowers featured throughout. Now moving on to our Patrick shoe, a lot of the panels are done with Patrick's pants color, which is that light neon green, and then some of those purple flowers featured on top. Now working with a color like this light neon green is no easy task, and it is definitely saturated here. It's not glossy, it doesn't have any sheen to it, so I definitely of course want to commend your use of duller throughout these. These do not have a painted look at all. They have a very flat finish all the way throughout, so I'm always going to be a huge fan of that. We have painted sock liners and insoles on both of the shoes. They still have that nice soft factory feel, so those were done correctly, of course. And then the tongue tags of both of the shoes also tie in the character, so we have a little miniature SpongeBob cartoon on his, and then a little miniature Patrick cartoon on his pair. So the tongues of both shoes was kept completely white, but the little fabric piping that's around the leather tongue was also done completely in yellow on the SpongeBob shoe, pink on the Patrick one, and that is something that gets covered up by the laces. It's not something that you see at first glance, but as I look at these more and more, you could tell these were done with an extremely high level of craftsmanship. All of the piping surrounding each panel was done perfectly here. There is a lot of colors that are extremely tricky to work with here from yellows to light neon greens, oranges. These were not easy and I know that these took an extremely long time to do. But as I look at these more and more, I just really, really respect the level of craftsmanship and the attention to detail that went into these. So great job, Paul. Thank you guys for joining us for episode six of Reviewing Your Customs. Please, please, please go out of your way to give all of these incredible artists a follow on Instagram. Let them know you saw them here on Reviewing Your Customs. It takes a lot of courage to go ahead and send in a pair and have it critiqued by a stranger, someone you don't know, and let them give your opinion since all art is subjective, of course. But thank you guys. Let us know what you thought about each of these pairs in the comments down below, and we'll see you guys in that next one.